What is up, guys? We doubles back here with a brand new video, and today we're gonna be checking out the Stormbringer on PA's Conquest of Azeroth Closed Alpha, and we are getting close to being done with all of the classes. First look, basically, with the new Dragonflight talents. I'm going to push through and make it all happen, and then we have Chapter 3 coming out, as you guys know. I will say, after the last Witch Hunter video, uh, you know, some of you guys weren't too happy with what you saw outside of the Bolt Slinger spec. What I will say is that I've recently got some changes going for the Darkness spec that I think make it a lot better and that's only the beginning by the way it's only the beginning there's still more to come and so you know what that's what these videos in many ways are for we can get feedback see what needs to be changed and now I can actually make stuff happen myself sometimes as well so that's pretty cool anyway if you guys enjoyed the video you know what to do hope you guys enjoy it though and let's jump right in Alright guys, today we're going to be making a Stormbringer on the Dev Client right now, checking out a max level character on Conquest of Azeroth, and yeah, let's go ahead and just make a troll, because I think my OG Stormbringer was a troll. Now here's what they say a Stormbringer is, casting damage dealer and support. So this is one of the six supports currently in Koa, I think we've covered two. They utilize mana and another resource called static, and this is what they do. You invoke the power of the Storm God to summon and control thunder orbs, you obliterate swaths of enemies with the immense power of lightning. You summon an elemental servant to aid you and your allies, and of course you generate static to empower your abilities. So these are based off of wizards that channel arcane lightning and wind. That's why it's not like shaman elemental energy, and as a result of that, orcs cannot actually be stormbringers, and that's apparently lore friendly based on this interpretation of a stormbringer. So okay, let's go ahead and grab our troll. And let's jump right into it. All right, guys, we are on a max level Stormbringer, and I'm actually in Hellfire Peninsula, which is a place that I think we'll be at quite a bit in the coming weeks when uh, Chapter 3 comes out, which is something I'm still very much looking forward to when it comes to regular Ascension. But as for Koa, I want to show you guys the Stormbringer today. Now, here's what I can say. Obviously, with some of the work that I've been doing, um, helping with the development of Koa, I have been learning a little bit more about exactly what's going down in regards to how many supports there are, how many tanks, how many healers, how many DPS. There are currently six supports. Wind is one of them, obviously, so we have the Wind spec, the Lightning spec, and the Thunder spec. All caster, all DPS, all day, except for the support spec, which is not as a support. Now, here's the thing. There's a big thing going on with supports right now. It's like the same thing that you would expect it to be, which is that supports have a consistent identity crisis, and you've got to reel it in and really confirm what you want a support to be. And as far as I can see, supports are going to be buffing people to make up for a lack of damage, and they're going to be providing utility to people in places like PvP in regards to slowing, providing zone control, having CC, and stuff like that. That's just an idea. Wind, in this regard, is going to be a master of zone control. But I do believe it's currently going to get changed a little bit, so keep that in mind. It used to be a healer, like, a year ago or whatever it was. So, you know, it has a lot of healing spells right now, and it definitely should not. Lightning and Thunder, though, seem to be in pretty good spots, and I'm going to show you all of it. But let's go ahead and just start off with the wind support spec. And I'm going to go ahead and build it real quick and give you guys an idea of at least what I believe are the parts of it that are going to stick around. Okay, so the Stormbringer of the wind spec they have the wind servant and so it's all going to focus on summoning an elemental an air elemental to run around and help you currently his abilities are a blessing of air for five percent more haste and five percent dodge to somebody and then he shoots people for nature damage as well now like i said it is a support spec so we have the basics in here but then we've got some interesting things that we can do to disrupt other people including some supporting stuff that heal uh, and i included the ones that are more prevalent in that regard and are actually probably going to stay but also to buff so let's just go in order here right so i have raging zephyr summon a raging zephyr and it's basically a tornado guys if you get hit by the tornado you have 50 percent reduced movement speed look at this this is so cool to me. You literally, and look, you can do multiple. This is what I mean by zone control in PvP. Imagine this, dude. You don't do that much damage, but you're literally a wind god guy summoning tornadoes. When people run into this, they get slowed, okay? Now, we've got updraft. So we're going to do the updraft. We summon a little air circle. It does heal. It heals the pet for a whole lot. And a lot of the abilities I have right now actually take health away from the pet. And I think that might not stay. We'll have to see. Like I said, it is slated for pretty major changes, but we'll go over it for now anyway. So the updraft, once again, you can plop that on the ground. It also lets you move faster when you're in it with some talents and your allies get that as well. So that's pretty cool uh, zone control. And then we've got Vortex, which as far as I can see is a stun, right? Nature damage, stun for three seconds. Super charged, I believe, is when you're maxed 
maxed out on static, by the way. And it says offensive spells have a 20% increased critical strike chance against the target while active. And that seems to be something that applies to your allies, right? So we're going to go ahead and see if we can look at the vortex right now. Let's see. There you go. He's like in a cyclone over there. That was actually not bad damage either. Let's just Voltaic Burst, Crackling Surge. Voltaic Burst, by the way, is just like your basic level one does damage. Uh, Crackling Surge has some synergy where you can make an instant cast. So we'll get more into those when we play the other specs, but they're something every spec can use. Now, speaking of stuff every spec can use, I have Tempest. This is pretty cool. It's literally the ball lightning ability that lets you do this. And I, like, literally turn into a ball of lightning and fly forward, so that's cool. Now, we've got Wind Wall right here. So, you shield an ally's spell casting, granting immunity to interrupt effect and silence effects, or removing those effects when used. And while active, the target also has a 50% chance to reflect all harmful spells. So, like, a baby Yasuo type of thing. So, you can see I'm all windy and stuff right now while that's on me. That's pretty cool. I've got Illusory Fog. Shroud an ally basically giving them 90% dodge, and it's usable while you're stunned, silenced, feared, or apparently confused. I have no idea what confused means, but anyway, it is a two-minute cooldown. You can see this. That's pretty cool, illusory fog. And we've also got right here, this came from the core tree, which is body of lightning. Charge an ally with lightning for 10 seconds. Everybody can get this, but it's cool for a support, causing them to do nature damage to nearby enemies and regenerate 1% mana every one second. So you can see this. So I'm literally just going to have some lightning on me. Body of Lightning. Now I'm just going down the line. So we do have a buff that's baseline, by the way. Wind Shield. You can give everybody magic resistance, which is cool. And then up here, we start to get into what is currently the siphon life from your pet and do an effect uh, core. Uh, again, I'm not sure how that's going to end up, you know, coming out at the end of all this. Yeah, that is something being looked at, but this is what it looks like so far. So I can siphon life from my pet to instantly do nature damage to somebody. And then my pet gets 20% spell haste as well, 20% more damage, and generates a stack of what they call typhoon every two seconds for the next eight seconds now typhoon says at 20 stacks my little dude becomes unbound and we'll check out what that means in a moment as well and hopefully not die to the fell reaver right there now as i move over to the side you can see the other ones we have kiss of the clouds siphon some uh, hp from the wind dude and i put a shield on somebody for 10 seconds they get no pushback or anything while the shield holds and i have hastening winds once again take health away from my pet and give my target 20 percent increased haste and then it grants updraft swiftness allowing up draft to have 60% more movement speed to all my allies who go through it so you can see that as well so I'll go ahead and do this you can see my dude lost HP but if I updraft like this look how much faster I'm going now and I'm going to need that to get away from that dude right so let's just go over here and let's just fly all the way over here. So let's just start killing some stuff and we can get an idea of what's going on so I'm actually going to summon some tornadoes you can see they're super slow as a result of that and I'm actually doing pretty big damage right now. Um, what else can I do? I can go for the Gale Winds. So that was actually pretty big pumper right now. I'm in max level Ascended Naxxramas gear right now. So the numbers you're seeing are pretty realistic, I guess, for when you're first getting into uh, Hellfire Peninsula. I can updraft myself. Gale Winds once again. How many stacks does my dude have? Oh, here he is. He has uh, a bunch of them, actually. I'm just going to keep using things that drain HP and see if he becomes unbound. I can heal him as well. I have Invigorating Surge. Really easy to heal him. Is he unbound? I think he's unbound literally right now. You can see it here. I'll screenshot it so we can actually see it before it goes away. Okay, so my pet gets 100% more damage, 25% more spell haste, and all damage done has a chance to strike the enemy with a lightning lash, doing more nature damage or reducing their movement speed and nature resistance by 30% and 35% respectively for five seconds. Wow. Wow. So you're a support and you don't do that much damage yourself, but as you're supporting and you're doing interesting things, you can make your pet really strong and focus on the air elemental to do damage for you. And I actually think it's a super unique way of doing things. I like it a lot. And I think that's what they're going to focus on as well. So yeah, ultimately, if they do end up focusing wind on pet control, zone control, and supporting and buffing your allies with movement speed, haste, and stuff like that, I think we've got a super cool concept here. And I think the thing that's really going to draw people to this class is is Raging Zephyr, I believe it's called, this thing. Look, it knocked him up, I think, too, right? Or did it knock him back? Let's try that again. Let's try that again. Look at that! <laughs> so if you landed on him, if you're good enough to land it on him, uh, not like me, of course. Oh, look at that. It knocked him back again. So it looks like they just knock him back. That is so sick. That, to me, is going to be what everybody griefs the enemy team with. Like, imagine being on Eye of the Storm. You are a wind freaking Stormbringer, and you just keep summoning tornadoes and crap. Everybody's flying off the side of the map. You're updrafting, supporting your team, creating movement speed increases, giving somebody a crap ton of dodge, making that one guy that does a lot of DPS embody lightning itself and do more damage. Oh my god, Fell Reaver really wants to kill me, dude. But yeah, like, it just feels like it's gonna be a lot of fun. You can stun that one dude that chases you and then knock him off with a Zephyr 
buffer after the stun goes away. So, oh my goodness, dude. And I only see it getting better. Now, I don't think I showed you guys Gale Breath, but this is a conal nature attack that reduces the armor of all affected enemies by 50%. More about the support with this, right? If you see that you have some melee on your team and you really want to help them do some big burst, what you can do is Gale Breath. You shoot them like that with some wind, and now they have a lot more damage that they're about to take to the melee abilities or, you know, physical ranged abilities. They get tossed at them, and that is going to be devastating, and that's what I mean by support, right? I might not have a lot of damage myself, but I can make you do a lot of damage while supporting you and, you know, knocking people off cliffs. It seems super fun. I really like this, and like I said, it's only going to get better when they end up doing more to it. So let's go ahead and switch specs and check out... I say lightning and we'll do thunder last. Okay, let's give you guys an idea of what lightning has to offer. We have storm fuse starting off right, generates static, does damage, and slows people. Let's see what this looks like. So we storm fuse, and there you go, it's just a slow. And then we've got thunder strike, let's check it out. It looks to be a cast time, it does some damage, and... Okay, that looks like it slapped. What does that actually do, though? Reduces healing the target receives. Okay, mortal strike effect on this guy. Now, I've got the usual, but we've also got call lightning. Let's call some lightning. Oh, that's cool. And then when they're below a certain amount of HP and they're in execute range, I can use electrocute. So let's check this out. Oh, it's instant cast, just like a straight up instant cast execute with that. Okay. Now I've got some other abilities as well. Let's just start moving forward, right? I've got, let's see, forked lightning, inflicts nature damage in a 15 yard cone in front of you every half second for three seconds while channeling my movement speed is reduced, implying I can move. So I've got another AOE ability as well called conjure storm, and I kind of want to use both. So I'm going to horn. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and conjure a storm and now I'm gonna do this fork lightning look at that I can electrocute this guy. I can voltaic burst to finish him off. Let's just go for a thunder strike Bam and actually it didn't kill him electrocute dead nice Yeah, that doesn't do as much damage because it's literally a mortal strike effect so just something to keep in mind Uh, let's see conjure storm once again though We just use that enemies in the storm take 15% increased nature damage from you for the duration Let's check that out again get a good idea So that literally is like that centaur in the baron storm ability But you have it yourself now and once again forked lightning you just channel in front of you I feel like that might need like a slightly better animation for forked lightning like just straight up chain lightning That's the only thing i've seen so far though to be completely honest. Let's call some lightning. It's the best animation animation so far. Yeah, that's just beautiful, dude. I don't even know how they made that. When you don't even know how they made something, I feel like that says a lot. It's like, it's wow, like, where'd you even get that? That is so sick. We could fork lightning this guy again. Yeah, like, there's no animation there. It needs, like, a chain lightning effect. You can electrocute. And, yeah, so it's a bunch of lightning stuff, but I think the runner-up for coolest ability is Conjure Storm, right? But the absolute coolest ability is going to have to be Call Lightning. It looks like it slaps. It's your big burst ability on a freaking 16 second cooldown. If you're supercharged, it does even more damage and a reduced cast time. So take a look at this, guys. This tells me what static is all about. At 20% static, I gain Thorum's Amusement, draining my static over time. At 40%, I get Thorum's Respect, draining increased static over time, so it keeps draining. At 70%, I get his Favor, draining massive static and enabling the supercharged effects on my spells. So it's not full, it's only 70% for that. I don't want to die, and by the way, Invigorating Surge costs static to use, and also some mana. So we can go ahead and start depleting that for some health. And let's just electrocute this guy. So let's supercharge myself, and then go for a Call Lightning, and just see what we're hitting with it right now. And it looks like somehow Electrocute became usable. So maybe there's some kind of talent allowing that to happen. Like, outside of them being in Execute range, as you can see. It's like letting me spam it. Okay, so I am supercharged. Let's go for Call Lightning. Oh my god, a 4,500 crit. And it was super fast, dude. Yo, that is actually super sick. Look at this, Electrocutioner. You can use Electrocute regardless of your target's current health. So that must actually be a talent. I just took what I needed so I could look at the on-use effect. Yeah, you get that pretty early on too, like pre-30 from what I can see. Nature crits give you a chance to make Electrocute usable anyway. Wow. So yeah, like the best ability is definitely Call Lightning. Look at all that damage from one spell. Uh, I think it really does play well into the theme. I'm just not a big fan of Fork Lightning's animation so far. I I also feel like Fork Lightning could have been more of like the Fork Lightning from Warcraft 3 that hits three targets in front of you and like zap, 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 you know? But if they want to make it a channel, that's fine. I would just like actually, you know, see, I can kind of see it there, but I would just make it to where it looks more like a chain lightning effect and it zap, 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 something like that. 
just for the sake of playing into the proper flavor and theme of the class. Everything else is perfect in my honest opinion so far. And I'm actually going to be very curious now to see how they differentiate lightning from thunder. So I guess we're about to find out. Okay, so this is what they talked about actually when we were first reading about what the Stormbringer is all about. And that is the summoning of thunder orbs, which theoretically any spec can take, but this one seems to focus on. So let's go into it and see what we get. Now I have this ability, by the way, that I get very, very soon expulsion causes thunder orbs within 40 yards to unleash a burst of lightning upon nearby enemies, knocking them away and dealing nature damage. Okay. Look at that thunder grip causes lightning orbs within 40 yards to grip all nearby enemies, slowing them by 50% for six seconds. It's going to be orb play hundred percent. It's a very unique thing on Koa that, you know, retail wow and regular wow in general just never really did much, which is like pet play. Pets have always been very wonky. I feel like, but on here, there's like plenty of different ways that you can actually utilize them. So we're going to check that out. Holy crap guys. So just looking at these right now, like this is already nuts. You can already see some orbs I summoned. So let's just take a look. So we have the actual thunder orb itself. So I summon a thunder orb. The thunder orb is supposed to be able to do some damage. So we'll check that out in a moment. But there's a lot of different abilities I have that allow me to interact with the orbs. I have this one thunder step teleport to a thunder orb that you target, increasing your movement speed by 30%, but destroying the orb. So you could see that. There's going to be a high skill cap on this. A good player is going to really mop the floor with people with this spec. I can already tell you that now. Whenever there's like little interactions like that that really give you a skill gap to abuse, people abuse it. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. If it genuinely takes a lot of effort, that's a, you know, perfectly valid thing to me. Now there's a lot more though, right? So I have Eye of the Storm instantly pulling my Thunder Orbs within 40 yards to my current location. So for example, there's an orb over there and I use this. It has a cast time and then all of my orbs come to me. So that's a good way to control your orbs and bring them to you. Now I also have this ability, Stormforge Blast. It's a knockback. Let's check this out on the giant boar. Oh my god, that's a super long cast time. And let's see. Come on, are you ever going to go off? Boom! Actually, it was huge damage and knocked him back a lot. So the long cast time is because it slaps. Gotcha, gotcha. Now I'm running away, as always, from the Fell Reaver. Uh, let's summon an orb and let it do some damage right here. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, now I can actually do an interesting thing here too, right? I can actually utilize, let's see, where is it? Holy crap, I feel like no matter what I do, it won't get away from me. But yeah, here, so I can actually summon three orbs at once and then a fourth one. And then we can come over here. We can bring all of the orbs to this guy, right? Yep, they all came right here. Now they're doing damage. And then I can actually use this, right? So I can empower my orbs to make them do 80% more damage. Okay, that guy's dead. I could potentially fly all the way over here. Maybe wait for the cooldown of this. But let's just summon an orb first. And we'll try to pull everybody back to me. And I can also use this, by the way, which is Thunder King. Um, and we'll go over the cooldown of that, but I'll use that for animation's sake. Look at that. That's nuts, dude. All right, let's summon a thunder orb and not die here, right? So Thunder Grip makes the uh, orb actually slow that guy, it seems. That's pretty cool. And, uh, wow, he's already dead. Okay, what is Storm Quake? Unleash a thunderous burst, doing nature damage to all enemies and cracking on the ground below you. For the next 12 seconds, enemies in the area have 60% reduced movement speed and take 20% more nature damage. Let's check this out. Oh, that's really cool. We can summon an orb, and then we can go ahead and pull this guy over to me. Yeah, like, this is actually going pretty well so far. I can pull take burst, and that thing's dead. I want to check out the Storm Forge Blast again. Like, I thought it was just a knockback. It looks like it's actually a super uber powerful ability that you could do just simply for damage and maybe go for a one shot so that's that and yeah that was actually pretty big damage all right let's kill this guy he's dead okay so okay i know exactly what i want to do first of all let's deplete our static to heal ourselves with the invigorating surge i think that's a pretty balanced heal too like you give up a lot of your damage so you can heal yourself back up and it's not even that crazy once again i'm gonna go click from my spell book and horn everybody to me all right that's at least three guys now let's go ahead and uh wall of lightning summon another orb so i have three orbs pull all the orbs to me now Thunder Grip, so they slow everybody. I'm going to empower the orbs. Oh, I expulsioned, actually, and that's what I think killed them all. They unleash a burst of lightning on all nearby enemies. Wow. I meant to use empowered orbs, so they just did more normal damage. Yeah, this is just orb play, dude. Orb play all day. Uh, let's read out what that Thunder King spell did, by the way. So when I used it, it reduced the cooldown of Tempest by 20%. I actually don't know what Tempest is, but okay. It grants 35% increased movement speed, but reduces spell haste by 75%. Wow, so you cast even slower. My melee attacks do bonus spell storm damage. Damage. That's weird. And while in this form, offensive Stormbringer spells have 30 yards reduced range, but melee attacks have a chance to trigger Thunderclaw, dealing bonus damage and making your next offensive Stormbringer spell instant. Wow, it's like randomly you're allowed to become a melee hybrid for 40 seconds on a three minute cooldown. That's going to require just like a lot to like actually understand, but let's just check it out again. So my melee attacks, they're going to do extra damage. I have Thunderlord right here. Oh, uh, let's see. Cast some of my next what again? Stormforge Blast. Ooh! 
Oh, dude, I just realized how crazy that actually is. Stormforge Blast is the mega hit, dude, the mega ability. Let's instant cast. Look, look, no, no, don't. I gotta get in range. Oh, man, I, I ruined it. I, I didn't have enough time. Let's get those stacks again. I still have uh, the Thunder King on me. Look at that. So I'm building my stacks up. My next Stormforge Blast is reduced by 80%. Come on. Is it instant yet? It is. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's like melee range or something now. Look at that. Just instant cast mega hit. That is super cool, dude. And everything else that's a cast time goes up, though. That is so sick. Okay, so that is the Stormlord, my friends. And I actually think it turned out pretty freaking cool. I think this one's a little bit more complex. We probably couldn't get into every little aspect of all of this. But I think it paints the picture quite well. Thunder is more about orb control. Probably a very high skill cap. Lightning is more simple, though. You just want to zap people with lightning. Do big burst damage. Be a regular caster. That is the spec to be. Wind is if you really want to play the full-on zone control fantasy which in my opinion is never something you get to try to do ever in any game, quite frankly, that's multiplayer, um, unless it's like a MOBA or something like that, and even then. So it's super unique already, and I really, really enjoy it. Listen, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and a subscribe. Major thanks to all the members on my channel. I love and appreciate all of you guys, but I'll see all of you all in the next one, and McDoubles out.